to the 23rd video in the video series of orbital mechanics of Python. This one, I'm going to be going over escape velocity and orbital eccentricity. So I'll start by the definition of orbital eccentricity, which is seen in this equation. So it's the um, difference between the apoapsis and the periapsis over the sum of them. And this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero because the apoapsis is defined as always being greater than the periapsis or when they're equal, this will make this eccentricity equal zero. And that's when you have a circular orbit. So when, you're, when your eccentricity is between 0 and 1, it's elliptical, which are most cases like these in the background. Parabolic is one where you have just enough velocity to escape, and then hyperbolic is when you have excess velocity on top of that. So a nice visualization here I found on Wikipedia, I'll post the link in the description, shows an elliptic orbit, which is pretty eccentric, 0 0.7, but it is confined to the gravity of the central body, where you see the parabolic has just enough velocity to be able to escape the gravitational pull of the central body and hyperbolic just has excess on top of that so it's got a more narrow trajectory so escape velocity what it is is the velocity equal to so it is equal to the required velocity to achieve parabolic orbit because parabolic orbit is defined as when you reach infinity which you will reach infinity away from the central body that your velocity will be zero so it's just enough to get there and um, so the escape velocity is dependent on the distance away from the central body so this is just a simple equation. It's actually pretty simple. It's square root of two times mu over r, where that's actually equal to the square root of two times what you have a circuit velocity at a certain um, r value here. So you can see that in this plot, this is actually within the same orbit, the escape velocities are different because it is dependent on how far away you are from the central body. So if you want to achieve escape velocity here in the periapsis, it's actually gonna take less um, delta V than it is out here because you're going so much slower out here. Even though that the actual escape velocity is um, lower, you're going so slow over here that it's actually more advantageous to do it this way. If you're, if you're just trying to escape, there's other cases where you want to thrust in different ways. So escape trajectories, so like the ones I just showed in the previous plot, there's high thrust ones which um, can be modeled as instantaneous delta Vs. Um, any one of the thrusts, as I said, at periaps for elliptic orbits if you're just looking to escape because you use less delta V, and I'll show that in the next video. And there's also a low thrust trajectories who have more of a spiral, which I'll show here. Is the plot on the left, that's one of uh, what the low thrust trajectory would look like as you spiral outward. And then there's some in between where they do some impulsive burns just to keep getting the orbit bigger and bigger, so over a few revolutions. Some people have done that to get to the moon. So escape velocity comparisons, I just wanted to show... Um, is kind of the range of values that you'll see and I'm doing these calculations assuming that the distance from the center to the R is 1.1 times the body radius. So I just ran this for um, Earth, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Bennu, which Bennu is an asteroid, um, where you can see Earth is about 10.6, Moon 2.2, uh, Mars 4.7, and then Jupiter, because it's so massive, it's just so much bigger than everyone else's, 56 kilometers per second. And I wanted to show that asteroids are actually a lot different um, when you have an as when you have your spacecraft there because this value is actually one, two, three shifted over at 19 meters per second, which means that it's actually 19 centimeters per second. So what that means is if you're off, if you go 19 centimeters away from away from the body, um, centimeters per second away from the body that you're going to escape. So you have to be very precise when you're orbiting asteroids. So I just wanted to show that, how it's such a large difference. And I just did it with a simple for loop here, where you calculate the escape velocity as two times the body mu over 1.1 times the body radius, like I said, and take the square root of that. So take it to the power of 0 0.5 and print them all out. And then that's how I just got this plot. I just wanted to show that real quick. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I wanted to sh show a little preview here of what the spiraling trajectory looks like, like I showed before. And also over here, I'm going to show an example in the next video where if you, if in that spiral trajectory, you actually stop too soon, you'll still be confined to the gravity of Earth and you'll come back. And I'll kind of show how to calculate that. So yeah, let me know if there's anything too slow, too fast, and thank you for watching.